here at Golden Sunbeam International College of Science and Technology, nestled near Iyukama, is an innovative farming technique that is used to feed the students in a self-sufficient way. This relatively new technique is called aquaponics. Aquaponics uses the science behind aquaculture, which is the production of aquamarine life in an area suitable for easy human management, and hydroponics, which is the production of crops without soil. Aquaponics is a way for producers to obtain two yields, fish and crops. The aquaponics system here at Golden Sunbeam is the only large-scale system in Ghana. Let's discover how the two worlds of marine life and crop production join together in an efficient, sustainable, one-man operating system also known as aquaponics. There are various ways to build an aquaponic system. Each person can create their own unique system, but the science is still all the same. Our own unique aquaponic system is broken up into four sections. These four sections allow different age groups of fish, which then allows four different harvest periods. With these four sections, the fish mature at the same rate, thus reducing fish feed waste. There are different fish breeds that can be raised in an aquaponic system. We like to grow Nile tilapia for consumption here at the farm for many reasons. The first reason is that our consumers, the students, love the taste of tilapia. The second reason is that Tilapia is readily available from our supplier, Renan Fisheries. The third reason is that tilapia have been proven to be hardier when it comes to fluctuation in pH and ammonium levels. This decreases our mortality rate among the tilapia when compared to other breeds. Each new arrival of tilapia consists of 1,500 fingerlings. Each fingerling weighs only 3 grams when we first introduce them to their new home. We've discovered that buying only male tilapia will ensure optimum growth among the whole school of fish. If female tilapia are among the school, then yields will dramatically decrease due to energy reallocation to production of offspring. Checking the pH levels often are important in keeping the fish and crops healthy. pH is ultimately the concentration of hydrogen. Different concentrations of hydrogen can change the environment of other molecules and nutrient availability to fish and crops. Crops, for example, require a pH range of 6.2 to 7.3 for optimum availability of nutrients. Tilapia have a wider range of pH tolerance than most fish. This range is from 6.8 to 8. Most tilapia aquaponic producers keep their pH range between 6.8 and 7.2 to compromise for both the fish and the crops pH needs. In order to test the water's pH and ammonium levels, we use different testing kits. These kits give different colors, which are compared to the coordinating color guide. For the ammonium testing kit, we have different additives that are needed in order to tell the amount of ammonium in the water. The first step is to collect a 5 milliliter sample of the water. Next, we add 10 drops of Reagent 1 into the vial and mix. We then add 4 drops of Reagent 2 in the vial, give a good swirl, and let it stand for 1 minute. Protocols then state that we need to add 6 drops of Reagent 3 into the vial and leave to stand for 2 minutes. The solution will turn a color, and you are to match that color with the coordinating color guide provided. This will give you the amount of ammonium in your water. All aquaponic producers try to stay below 0.2 parts per million. If you are above that recommended rate, then you should drain most of your water and add in fresh, clean water. This will ensure the longevity of your fish. 
To test your water's pH level, dip the provided test strip into the water for a few seconds. We then remove it from the water and allow it to air dry. The test strip will change color. Please compare this color to the color guide provided, thus giving you the pH of your water. If the pH is below 6.8, aquaponic producers add calcium carbonate, also known as lime in the agri community, to increase the pH level. If the pH is above 7.2, producers add pH down products that contain phosphorus to buffer the pH level. These additives should be incorporated slowly throughout the day and directly to the site of incoming water. This ensures that the fish will become accustomed to the new pH levels without going through shock. If applied slowly throughout the day, additives will also have the time to dilute through the water before being pumped out of the moat. The pump system keeps the water at appropriate levels and the water flow constant. Clearing debris from the pumps and pipes will keep the system flowing properly, thus providing plentiful, constant, and nutritious water to the crops. As we dig through the growing medium of the aquaponic system, you will notice that a large portion is rock. The rocks act as both an anchor and a filter. An anchor in that the crops use the rocks to stabilize itself to grow upright. This is what happens in the soil of a field, but there is no soil here. Just water cycling, fish waste, and rocks. The rocks act as a filter by trapping the fish excrement to become broken down into readily available nutrients for the crops. Upon pest scouting, we can see there is significantly less pests in the crops of our aquaponic system when compared to conventional production. Many believe that this can be attributed to the lack of soil, which acts as an incubator for eggs during a pest's early life. Some aquaponic systems are able to be enclosed, also resulting in a low to no pest community. In larger systems with proper filtration, producers should stock the tank to a ratio of 226 grams of fish per 3.8 liters of water. An effective manager should know how many grams of fish are in their system to keep up with the previously stated fish to water ratio. An effective manager will also know how much feed they are adding and how many square meters of crop production area they can support. The scientists at the University of the Virgin Islands have determined that an aquaponics producer can support one square meter of crops per each hundred grams of fish feed added per day. By now, you should have a good understanding of the fish production and maintenance. But what about the crops being produced? We know that the rocks act as a soil in the field by holding nutrients and providing a structure for the roots to grow around. But you may be asking yourself, what kind of plants can be grown in an aquaponics system? That is a great question. It is best to plant crops that have a fibrous root type. Crops with tap roots that grow straight down, such as carrots or tuber crops, such as cassava, will produce small and poor quality yields due to the rock growing medium. However, the types of plants that yield fruit above the ground are perfect for aquaponics. A few crops that we grow here at Golden Sunbeam are tomatoes, cucumbers, various peppers, and okra. We can get many more plants per square footage in this system when compared to conventional farming. As an example, Purdue University, located in the United States, released data stating that the average tomato producers plant approximately 43 plants per a 325 square foot area. However, in this aquaponic system, 
we can plant 1,157 more plants in that same square footage. Just think of the time, costs, and labor saved by growing produce in an aquaponics system. With the knowledge and skills that you have acquired here at Golden Sunbeam International College of Science and Technology, you are now ready to start your own aquaponics system to raise delectable fish and produce to sell or for your family's own consumption. The options are endless and the sky is the limit.